since 2003 is the tech coordinator, tech integration specialist, and uh, as a high school teacher. Bob asked me to kind of go over what we did um, and what we've done in the past, some of which obviously Jeff, you already know. Um, but so this is kind of a, a conglomeration of, of that. Uh, here at National Trail, we have a number of trainings that we do every year. Uh, since 2008, we've had a PD day that's um, directed just at technology skills. We run that like OETC in that we have four different slots, uh, varying length times, and teachers uh, get to choose um, what session they go to on that. Um, part of the way we get, because we usually have around 40 um, options during the day, uh, we take 10% of our staff to OETC, and, and you're not allowed to go two years in a row, and part of the conditions of going is you have to come back and do at least two uh, different presentations for the rest of the staff. We do um, weekly Tech Tuesdays in here. Um, they are of varying topics. I have schedules, but I also rotate those and allow teachers to make uh, specific requests on things that they want to do. Uh, those are both um, recorded and can do present, and we stream them live on YouTube at the same time. So if a teacher is in their room and just wants to keep working and put it up on the projector, they can. Um, we have a YouTube self-help site, which is all those things, as well as any time a teacher asks a question, a video is made and they're sent back a video uh, response uh, as well. I already said that. Um, and it includes any, any frequently asked questions that, that teachers have as well. I'll kind of show you how we use that. And then we also use our learning management system, Moodle, to do PD courses, like we have a Moodle certification course, we have a blended learning course, and we have a kind of a Tech Tuesday course where they can see all those courses put together. Um, we did a lot of last minute response stuff for COVID-19, and um, I'm in the process of redoing all these videos because they were really shotgun, I, I gotta get it out today kind of thing um, on how to do a lot of things that we hadn't done before. If you haven't seen Moodle, we use Moodle instead of Progress Book. It's the launch site where students see all their grades, access all the courses, access all the activities and stuff in the course, uh, and it allows us to do all the blended learning stuff that we do. Um, kind of has all these resources and all those activities. Um, we expect teachers to put all their assignments in Moodle uh, so that they can students can access them anywhere. We also uh, put videos and all these different kind of activities, and honestly, that's half of the activity list. Um, we've got tons more that we've added uh, since then, and it integrates seamlessly with Google Docs as well, so it's not a one or the other. Uh, we started um, a Record Every Class initiative before COVID-19 started, uh, where uh, Bob really, when Bob came, uh, his uh, daughter had had uh, situation where they wanted to report it where she was and, and and we had been teaching to do this for years we just really hadn't pushed um, so we had a number of classes on why we felt student or teachers should record classes how to do that and then what to do with the recordings this is kind of our list of our why we felt it was important and this is all asynchronous we felt like it was important for students that miss class and we, we talked about that being physical Students aren't always here, even when they're here, uh, to use those videos for remediation and then uh, for blended learning activities in the future. And then I feel very stronger, strongly that if you're recording your classes, you step up just a little bit and, and it makes you a better teacher in the long run. Um, this is my class. I recorded every, every class and post every class um, for the last five years. Uh, I have no more than eight kids in a class, and you can see I've got uh, almost 57,000 views. None of these are listed. These are just my kids uh, that watch them. So I've had teachers say, there's no reason to do that. Nobody's going to watch them. Uh, that's who we, uh, students watch them all the time. I will tell the average watch length is about five minutes. Because they don't come in and watch the 45 minute lecture. They want to get the one thing they missed, and they go on. Uh, and that's really what it's for. Um, we taught the easy way, uh, which is using Smart Recorder, but uh, if you don't have smart word software, I know you guys have digital apps and stuff, I have never seen a single um, digital whiteboard that did not come with recording software. And 
it's extremely simple. It's a button that says record and then stop. And that gets this. It does not get you. Um, and most teachers are comfortable with that. They get uncomfortable or they have in the past when they're seen. We have everybody make class classroom YouTube sites, upload them there, and then link it uh, to their Moodle site when they're done. And I, I tell teachers, don't make it a listed one. And just because it's on YouTube doesn't mean anybody needs to find it. The only way to find teacher stuff is to be in your classroom. Uh, so that kind of alleviates some of the teacher fears. And I will say that Bob made a point when we started pushing this and saying this will never ever be used for uh, yeah, evaluated purposes, nobody will ever use this against you. This is for your students. We're not going to go and look at them. It's just for you. Uh, and I will say that that in, in this process, um, I'm not going to say we have 100%. I'm going to say in the high school, we probably have about 25%. And it goes down from there in the other schools. Um, we've always tried to make this easy. I have a mic mounted over there. Every single classroom that has ever asked for it has a mic mounted in the ceiling that pops out of the ceiling. You don't have to walk around and find a mic. We actually tested headset mics and Bluetooth mics. We tested all kinds of stuff when we started this in 2009, really, when it, is when it started. And all of those were abysmal failures. A, a, a mic that you never notice after it's there. I mean, you don't even know lines over there, et cetera. Okay. Um, so that's kind of where we started. Um, all you need, and almost everybody has a projector, interactive whiteboard, a YouTube account is free. The only thing that is required to purchase for majority classrooms is a microphone. And that microphone that I have sitting out there, the one, the black one in front of you, is this, this one in black. And it's really the microphone of choice that we've found. Um, the blue snowball, it's 57 now. I've never paid over 49. And, and some of the prices that you're going to see when I show you prices, all gone up, um, and and that's if you can even find it. Like you can't find white ones anymore. Uh, they are the, the I've never bought black ones until now because the white ones, when they pop out of the ceiling, you don't even notice a big black ball on your ceiling. You notice. So I've never. I've always tried not to get the black ones, but that's the only one you can get. So um, it's amazing the things that disappear completely as soon as COVID, right? I mean, so. Um, that's what we're using. That one's a, it's called a Yeti Nano. That one is better. It's also more expensive. It's about $20 more for the Nano. Um, that one also doesn't hang through the ceiling. These, um, you can easily just cut a hole, a small round hole, and the, the, the base screws right in it from the other side and can hang really easily. That one you can't hang through the ceiling. Although it does, well, both of them mount to tripods, and they, you can mount them other ways. But those, you just, cut a little tiny hole, pop it through, and then screw the mount on, and it just hangs there just fine. So um, we found these to be the best thing. Um, we really found um, previously that nobody wanted to be on the video. The only place anybody was ever in the video was in this room. That camera is one of the ones I'm going to show you that's over there. It's mounted higher. No matter where the kids are seeing, they're not in the video shot. Uh, it, it letterboxes me down in the corner. Um, and that was requested by uh, the staff because they're watching PD videos all the time and they, and they don't want to not see anyone. It's kind of too bland without somebody. So um, teachers felt previously that they were seeing students every day. They don't need to see me on the video. There was no real requirement on that. Um, but we saw a big change of that. And this is kind of what, okay, so I have two views that I wasn't obviously sitting here when I took it because I didn't. But either students see me teaching with a little letterbox of the screen, or they see the opposite, which is the screen with me being a letterbox. That's the two ways that, that you can present that way. COVID-19 changed everything, really. Um, we went from teachers saying, I don't want to be in the video, to I have to be in the video. Um, because they're not seeing students every day, it became really, really important in a very short period of time students see us. It doesn't matter whether it's asynchronous or synchronous. They need to have that connection with the teacher. And so we flipped 180 degrees on it. Um, that's a whole different discussion on whether synchronous or asynchronous is better. Uh, synchronous, if you don't know, is when we're talking about Zoom and Google Meet and seeing us teach. Asynchronous is when we record and upload. 
Um, I know that Spring Rural is going all synchronous. Um, they're requiring every, in the fall, every teacher has to be casting on Google Meet every single class, every single day. All their students have to check in with a video camera every single class, every single day. Um, that is fine with some demographics. Um, they have a very different free and reduced lunch population than we do. And we found, um, we did a survey the week before this all happened. Sorry, I should have, uh, I should have pointed my mic. My ringer. By the way, you never miss that. <laughs> you never miss that ring. Um, that 93% that of our students in the middle school and high school said they had Wi-Fi. We had a very low percentage that didn't. But then over time we found that those students that said they had Wi- many of those students that said they had Wi-Fi, their Wi-Fi was their parents' hotspot when they went home. And I ran into a parent in a parking lot that's like, I don't know what to do. My phone doesn't work with me, so my student can't use it during the day, which is why I really feel with, with the demographic we have, asynchronous may be better. So they can watch it when mom and dad can home. So they can watch it at a different speed because YouTube's great at changing the resolution based on your connection. Google Meet is not. It just loses you. It doesn't do it as well. Okay. So um, we added at the end is how to use OBS Studio, which is a free piece of software, and that's what I'm using right now um, to record my classes um, to do this, to just record the screen and inject the, the teacher at the same time. And that requires a webcam which required some additional purchases, which were completely unavailable a week after we all went home. If you try to buy a webcam the week afterwards, they were not there. We were lucky, I had a store of some. We actually got the majority of the teachers taken care of, but there were a couple that I didn't. What we did for teachers is every single staff member got a uh, 60 that's the laptops that are sitting up here. They all have webcams, so they all could teach just using the webcam on there. Honestly, most teachers prefer to just do it that way. They have no problem with that. And, and going into the fall, if we can't get the webcams we want, that's what we're gonna suggest. Just set your laptop there, turn on Google Meet, and use that. And that'll work just fine. It's not as good a webcam, but it's better than no webcam, which is really the option. So um, we did that for all of our staff, which was kind of a crazy week or so because we didn't realize which ones had web, nobody had used them, ever. I still don't have one with a webcam. I didn't realize some of them had them, some of them didn't. We were taking back laptops, reissuing laptops, anyway. So that was kind of a mess to get, but in the end, we got everybody one with a uh, webcam. Those people that were like, I want to use my desktop PC, um, we did have some webcams. I, I like Logitech because it works with everything, but the $60, $69 price is $30 more than it was before COVID. I mean, these things doubled. And this isn't even the highest end webcam that you can get. I'm not really going this direction at all. I don't, I don't see a positive point of going that direction. Um, this is a lower price, it's $55. Um, the downside of that camera, well the upside is you can put it anywhere. A webcam that needs to be close. That camera has a actual lens in it. You could, you could mount it back there in the corner I mean, we used it to, to do our graduation. It was mounted all the way across the football field up in the thing. It's got a really good optical zoom so you can get in from anywhere. So you can literally mount these with like that bracket anywhere in the room. And if you do it at height, you can get the teacher done. So, and this one is not out. I don't think people realize the positivity of this one. I have never seen this one run out at all. So that's one option. Uh, if you get either one of those, you need to get a bracket, which is another $23. They clamp on, I haven't seen any bracket that's less than that. Um, and I, you, I already showed you a screen capture. This is what it looks like in my class. Uh, and I think I get, I don't know what the example, but it does, it does a good job of, of seeing you teaching and stuff. And that's kind of what my, my class looks like. But we don't do that. Um, yeah, yeah, I just stream it and or record it on OBS Studio and then um, and then post it on YouTube. I would say this is the best option, and that's the one that's right there. Uh, and the reason I say it's the best option because it's the best it's the best camera and it's the best long-term teaching tool. 
the, the IPVO has a great 8 megapixel camera. You can set it up anywhere with the USB extension. And when this is all over, every teacher has a document camera when they're done, which is just one extra tool that can use the classroom. Uh, the problem is uh, getting it. I, 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 I'm, I just always have some on back order on Amazon, and then all of a sudden, like, these two just showed up. And I've got four more on back order, and then they, when they get them in, they just ship them out. So if you want to get these, you just order them and wait for them to come. They're basically, they are the best. That's what you've got. When, I thought you had the old one. That's why when, when I walked in there, you got the best thing you can have up there. It, it tilts up. It, I mean, it, it can be used as a document camera, which is what it's intended for. And then it can be used as a, as a webcam. And it works great as a webcam. The teacher just could set it on any, any desk and use it to record everything. And it's a really high definition one. There's no webcam you put on a laptop that meets that. And then you've got it later, and it's got a stand. Uh, and there's a there's a there's a better version of it that's thirty dollars more that hooks on the microscope. So we got those for our science teachers anyway, um, so that if they wanted to present what they're doing in science class. So I would say that IPVO is the best thing. Um, we did do some advanced stuff in some classes, and, and I ordered green screens. Um, for teachers that were kind of going above and beyond and the IP, well, you can use any webcam with it, but the better the webcam, the better it shows up. And I really, um, they, I, they, they, these two teachers completely put me to shame on what they did. They, the, that's why they got, they started out like I did with a, with a just paper behind them. And then after I saw the first couple, I mean, these are all the videos that they did during, um, the non-traditional instruction, they had one every week, they got dressed up, they had cool green screen backgrounds. I, I can't even imagine kids not coming to their videos and wanting to watch them. I'm not gonna make you watch the whole thing, but they're, they're hilarious. All the work, and, it, and it's just down in her art room. It's just clamped to the wall, hanging down, and uh, she uses a regular old uh, webcam to do it with. So, I, I mean, I had to teach them how to do it, but man, they ran with it, so. There's some really cool advanced things that a teacher could do. Um, don't even know why I have that. We have a video owner who said that. Oh, and then the YouTube channel really, um, really was used. We've got uh, playlists for all different kinds of things teachers want to go and learn about. Uh, we don't need to watch an example. Of it. Oh, you, I, I really stepped up my my videos. And made lead ins of all my videos. And I mean, I really, over COVID, I really, um, but, but I, I really tried to make all the videos higher quality than I did in the past. So they're not just these. Um, I've gone back and redone a, a ton of the video library. This is all green screen and stuff uh, behind me so that it's even clearer and better quality than it was before. This is just over COVID. I had almost 14,000 teacher views over COVID, which between 100 and 200 views a day during COVID. So really, a YouTube channel of, of instruction really, really was, I think, the biggest thing that, that uh, teachers got out of stuff. And I already said this. Uh, what I would recommend is trying to get the IPVO. There are other document cameras that maybe you're in that will work. I just know the IPVO comes with software. It's really high resolution. Um, even the old ones, which I think I took that, it tends to work just fine. I have give all the what the old ones are gonna look like. They're like a silver tube on a stick. Uh, those work just fine. Um, it's just these. This is the current version. Um, if you do that, the USB extension cables, twelve bucks to get it to the front of the room because that cable is not long enough, and that way you would. Teachers wouldn't have to move desktops around and that kind of stuff. So that adds another 12 bucks to the cost. Uh, that does have a mic. I've never used the mic on the people. I don't know how good it is, how far away it has to set in order to get good sound. I'm not sure if, if uh, that would be good enough. I still think having the mic hooked up and stuff full time is, is a better option. So that's kind of what we did. I don't know if that is that what you wanted to go over. I don't know if that kind of I think what we need to look at is how we get every teacher in the fall 
ready to record their lessons if we have any students who are going to be doing remote education. 